Have you ever received a call from your doctor office telling you that your CT scan or MRI of the brain came back normal for your age? But there are some white spots in your brain and some atrophy. And you ask yourself, or you ask the staff, what is that? And they tell you, if it's just normal atrophy, shrinking of the brain, and some white spot, basically a normal MRI. Hold on. Even though that these white spots could be normal aging process, when significant, can lead to dementia, urinary incontinence, depression, walking issues, and even a slow movements. In other words, this is not just because you are getting old. There are other factors involved, and I will tell you in this video what to do to prevent or at least minimize these white spots in the brain. My name is Dr. Sayas. I'm a board-certified neurologist and internist. Let me show you an MRI report. Imagine that this is your report and you get this report and you go to the body of the report and it say minimal white matter T2 signal abnormalities in a non-specific pattern, global parenchymal atrophy is mild. And then you go to the impression and you see mild non-specific white matter disease probably related with normal aging or small vessel disease in this age group, mild global parenchymal atrophy is present. What is Y matter? Well, Y matter is the internal part of the brain. The gray matter is the external part of the brain. The Y matter is composed by bundles of nerve fibers. They are actually white or at least close to white due to the color of the layer that cover these nerve fibers. This area of the brain contain tiny, small vessels, easily to break or to get occluded. And when these happen, it looks white on MRI or darker on CT. This is basically a decrease of blood supply to the brain. And when severe enough, it can cause permanent cell death. We call that cerebral infarction. Clinically, we call that ischemic stroke, in this case, due to small vessel disease. In less severe cases, when this is something progressive, slow progression disease, it might lead to many other things, such as dementia, balance or walking issues, urinary symptoms like urinary incontinence or urinary fre increased frequency, depression, sleeping disturbance, and technically Parkinsonism, which means slow movement and stiffness, and usually affecting the lower limbs more than the upper limbs. Now the questions are these three. Question number one, why does this happen? Number two, what can be done to prevent or decrease the probability of having this problem? And number three, what is brain atrophy? Let me start answering the first question, why? Why this is happening? Well, there are many factors. The most common factor is because you are getting old. There is nothing that we can do about it. We all are going to get old or we are getting older. So uh, when you get older, your bones, your muscle, your vessels are not the same. So they are, the vessels are more fragile and easily to get occluded. If I get an MRI on 10 patients over 65, probably 100% of them will have some degree of Y matter disease. And when they are small, so tiny and very mild and no symptoms, we call that this is a normal aging process. Another factor, very important, is high blood pressure. High blood pressure. This is a very common disease and highly associated with 
these white spots on the MRI. Another one is having high glucose, high sugar levels. We call that diabetes. That's a big one too. Dyslipidemia, which means high cholesterol, bad cholesterol levels. Remember, obesity is highly associated with all these things that I just mentioned, diabetes, hypertension, uh, dyslipidemia. Just to give you an idea, approximately 42% of our population in US are classified as obese in 2017. You can go to this website and actually the description will be, um, the link of the of this website will be in the description of this video uh, below. Also, smoking is a big one too. Chronic kidney disease is a big one too. And head trauma. When you get a head trauma, severe head trauma, you might, ha you might have scars uh, and those scars look white also on the uh, MRI. Now, Many patients with migraine also, they can have tiny white spots on the MRI as well, especially in the frontal lobes. Now, there are other less common conditions that I'm not going to discuss today, such as autoimmune process, uh, prior brain infections. They are rare, but still uh, uh, is a... Uh, is a factor that you need to consider when the patient is having severe or significant amount of white matter disease. Now let's answer the second question, which is probably the most important, what to do? Well, unfortunately, if you already have white matter spot, white matter lesions on the MRI, there's nothing else that we can do except prevent further white spots and further deterioration. We can prevent that, we, we can minimize that. But if it's already there, this is basically a scar lesion, scar lesion in the brain. So we cannot eliminate that. Now, if you see all the factors that I discussed, all of them, at least the majority of them are actually preventable. So, and all of them, basically the majority of them are cardiovascular risk factors. One, and the first one, very important, is to have a good blood pressure control. So make sure that you have a good blood pressure control, which means a blood pressure below 120 over 80. Okay. So uh, if you see this table here, this table uh, classify blood pressure in normal when it's uh, below 120. Uh, over 80 and elevated between 120 over uh, 80. And you see what is the definition of hypertension and the severity. So I got this from the American Heart Association. So you can go to the website and more information will be there. The other important factor is having a good cholesterol level, okay? Especially the LDL, the bad cholesterol. Try to read this uh, uh, paper, this uh, document, My Cholesterol Guide, you will see here by the American Heart Association. The link will be in the description of this video below, okay? Number three, common sense, very important is stop smoking. Find a way to stop smoking. There are many ways. Very difficult, but possible. You just need to do it. Number four, make sure that you don't have pre-diabetes, pre-diabetes, it's getting close to diabetes, or if you have diabetes, you need to have a good control of your diabetes. Talk to your doctor about these issues. And if you have diabetes and you don't think that you, have, you are having a good control of your glucose, your sugar, you need to see an expert. Who is the expert in diabetes? The endocrinologist, endocrinologist, okay? Look for endocrinologist. Number six, number five, actually. Head trauma, very important. Try to avoid head trauma. 
common sense. If you get head trauma and it's severe enough, you might cause scar lesions in the brain. And then did that, this scar lesion will look white on the MRI. Number six, and the last one, and probably the most important, at least for me, is to have a good routine of exercises. Why is that? Because exercises is basically the base of everything. It will decrease the probability of you having the other factors that I just mentioned. Hyper decrease the probability of you having hypertension, diabetes, obesity, uh, high cholesterol levels. So it's the base of everything, okay? Don't tell me that you don't have the time. The thing is that it is not your priority and that's why you don't have the time. Otherwise, you will find the time. Uh, you just need to push yourself to get outside of your comfort zone, but gradually, okay? You need to know yourself. You need to know your limits. You can start even with five minutes daily every other day. Um, you don't need to run. You don't need to uh, walk one hour, two hours. Start slow, go slow, progressively. And then try to get outside of your comfort zone. Okay? Very important. Now let's answer the last question, which is what is cerebral atrophy, brain atrophy. You see your report and it, it say you have brain atrophy. What is that? Well, when you get older, your brain gets smaller. It's a, it, we call that shrinking of the brain, shrinking of the brain. It's a normal phenomenon. It's a, a normal aging process. Uh, think about this. When you were... 25, you have big muscles, right? Now you are 75. You don't have the big muscle that you used to have before. It doesn't matter how much exercises you are doing, it's not going to be the same. The same applied to the brain, right? So you get older, your brain will show signs of atrophy. If I get that MRI in somebody uh, 100 years old, 99 years old, most likely I will find atrophy of the brain. It's a normal aging process. However, when this is very severe, and especially when it's asymmetric, so one specific area of the brain is getting smaller when compared with other, this is not normal. This is pathological, okay? This is pathological. So, how you can minimize the atrophy, progressive atrophy of the brain? Well, you can apply the same recommendation that I just discussed, cardiovascular risk factors that I discussed, the same apply uh, to how to prevent or slow down or to try to slow down the atrophy, the normal atrophy of the brain. It's the same thing with your muscle. Um, if you want to avoid progressive atrophy, use it. If you don't use it, you lose it. The same thing happened with your brain, okay? If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. See you soon.